Good morning everyone. Today is the first day of our Bhutan trip. I just heard something very interesting and wanted to share with you. Just hear that. If you don't know what that is, that's a call of a peacock. See? It's there right over at the top of the tree. It remained there on the tree for quite a while and we thoroughly enjoyed listening to it and its companion. The morning felt really so good that I didn't want to get inside the room. But we had to get ready and leave for our next destination. In a short while, we had the company of some more members from the wildlife. A family of monkeys paid us a visit and there were quite a few of them there. After this cute and eventful morning, we checked out and headed for the breakfast. As you can see, the forest was looking even more lush and vibrant in the morning because of the rain last night. Now let me tell you a little about our travel plans. From Funchiling, we were headed to Thimpu today. And from Thimpu, we were going to Punakha. From Punakha, we will be going to Hopjiga Valley for a day's visit. And from Popjika Valley, we will be again back to Punakha and then we will travel to Paro. From Paro, we will be heading to Ha Valley for a day's trip via the Chalela Pass. And then from Paro, we will return to India by road. Our driver Dada had come on time and soon we were cruising towards Jaigaon and the Funchaling border where our border formalities will be done. It's a bright and beautiful day and it had rained last night but the sky was clear in the morning. The road itself was so pretty completely surrounded by trees, tea gardens and the occasional sighting of Torsa river. Some scattered clouds were there but it did not rain and soon we could see the blue mountains of Bhutan. We felt excited like kids when we saw this view. In about 45 minutes, we reached the Bhutan border where Funsho, our guide, had come to meet us. My passport and mom's voter ID card were checked at the entrance and then we went inside the pedestrian terminal for the remaining of our formalities. Our e-permit was already done by the agency, yeah. so it hardly took us 20 odd minutes to get the formalities done. There are good washrooms inside the pedestrian terminal which you can use for a quick bio break. Then we headed outside. Punsho led us to the car. There he is helping us with our luggage. So he was very helpful throughout the trip and this was just the beginning. Also, since the e-permit was already done, we didn't need to go to the immigration office for submitting the SDF. It was all taken care of. These blue tents are the stalls which the locals set up during the weekend for some fun fair. Next we met Sange, our driver for the trip. Because uh, uh, the road is uh, having many turns mm. and there is a hilly, hilly road we are driving uphill because uh, the altitude over here is mm. a 
around 200 meter, 150 to 200 meter above sea level. Okay. However, like as we drive our field and then uh, go towards Tipu and then when we reach Tipu, so it's uh, 2,300 meter above sea level then. Oh. Uh, we we like we will reach to the high altitude. Then the the, the temperature there is uh, yeah, moderate. So mm. It is summer. When you enter Funchaling, there are two things you should do. First, set your clock forward by 30 minutes and purchase a local SIM card. I forgot the second one, so I had to undergo a lot of hassle in Tim. Soon we reached the second checkpoint where our permits were checked. The day visitors are not permitted beyond that checkpoint. As we left Kunchling behind, the scenery has started to magically change. The drive from Kunchling to Thimpu is a breathtaking journey that will take you through some of the most scenic landscapes in Bhutan, offering a glimpse into the country's natural beauty and changing geography. As you leave Kunchling, the bustling border town the road begins its ascent almost immediately, winding its way up into the mountains. The scenery quickly transforms from the urban setting to lush green hills covered in dense forests. The air grows cooler and fresher, a welcome change from the warmth of the lowlands. At times, the terrain reminded me of some of the Sikkimese hills or even the Maharashtrian hills post-monsoon. The serpentine road twists and turns offering stunning views at every bend with the landscape gradually unfolding before you. Sometime we were greeted with clouds and mist. One important point that I wanted to mention here is for the people who have motion sickness. The journey from Funshaling to Thimpu is full of turns and bends, and if you have motion sickness, you need to carry some anti-vomit medicines with you so that you can prevent any uneasiness. I usually take my anti-vomit pills 30 minutes before my journey starts. So now we have taken a pit stop at one of the big vegetable markets en route and you can see how beautiful the setting is. So let's go and explore some of the local vegetable and fruits. Little, not very spicy. Is it used to make emadachi? Yeah. Okay. For all the cheese lovers, this is the local hachupi. So, found mostly in the Himalayan regions like Bhutan, churpi is not just another candy or lozenge. It's a way of life here. Like all along the streets, you can spot numerous shops selling these garland of what looks like hardened cheese cubes, brown or white in color. This is the first Bhutanese money or ankle drum that I got by purchasing some plums and I had to take a photo. This is local. And INR and BTN are exactly equivalent. So you can use both Indian money as well as BTN interchangeably. After almost an hour and a half, we have stopped at a place called Dwejang Paksam Hotel a little before Gedu and we were very happy to be able to stretch our legs because it had been a long ride. And look how quaint this place is. And of course, when you are in Bhutan, how can you miss the chilies? Let's now go inside and check out what we can have for breakfast. 
so this was the menu out of which I did not want to have Maggi or anything heavy so I just opted for some vegetable momos here you can see the shop is also having a number of snacks item uh, I can see that most of them are from India as well as a few local Bhutanese snacks the tea was served first and with the tea came this is zo or crunchy roasted rice which is like uh, you know raw rice that has been soaked in water and then roasted in a pan with or without oil usually it is consumed by stirring into a cup of tea after a bit of wait finally my momos are here and it's served with a spicy red chutney on the side uh, which is absolutely delicious. I mean, this you need to try if you are stopping over here. Hundred percent recommend. See who has come to meet me. Good boy. <laughs> we have resumed our journey and as you can see we are at quite a height and that's the reason why the temperature has dropped it's really cold now but I don't want to close the windows the air is so fresh and crisp that you know uh, city dwellers like me I mean this is like you know something we really crave for and finally I feel I'm in the mountains away from the heat of Kolkata I'm not editing out this footage just because I feel that you know you should see this this is so beautiful this is so wholesome that you should get a feel of what we saw what do you need more in life to be happy other than miles of uninterrupted views of the mountains We have reached a place called Gedu. It is one of the most populous town between Kunshaling and Thimphu. And also one of the College of Royal University of Bhutan named Gedu College of Business Studies is located in Gedu. That's the entrance to the college that you're seeing now. It's so unreal. I really don't know which side I should look at. I mean, just look at this. It's like, you know, so divine. Mist and fog is just rolling in, creating an atmosphere where the mountains seem to float in and out of our view. These tall white prayer flags are known as Manidhar. Usually 108 flags are raised after a person has died as a remembrance for the deceased. Actually, so the mantra prayers will be taken to the western heaven and the soul of the dead people will be benefited. And what about the other colored flags? Is there a significance for that? Those are for the living being. Okay. So is there a significance for the colors also like if there is a red, yellow, uh, all those colors also have any significance? Uh, colors don't have a significance but like it, it indicates the 4 element. 4 okay. element, uh, no, R, the wind, air and the sky like that. Okay, 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 all the elements. Yeah. Just yeah. make a note of this waterfall. Right now it doesn't have much water 
but I'll show you what it looked like when we were coming back. That too, just within a week. We have just stopped here because we saw something very incredible. Just look at that. How cool is this? We had not expected a waterfall right in the middle of the road. Look at this. We stopped at Chuzong, which is the confluence of two rivers Wangchu and Parochu. Such confluence of rivers is considered inauspicious by the Bhutanese. Hence, four Chortans have been built here to ward off the evil. Mm. These Chortans are of different styles, namely Bhutanese, Nepali, Ladakhi and Tibetan. Finally, we have reached Thimpu and that is the first view of the city. That's the entrance of a stadium. Isn't it so pretty? Let me tell you an interesting fact about Bhutan. It is traditionally a matrilineal society, so houses and properties are passed down through the female line. When a couple marries, the husband moves in with the wife's family. Funshu took us to a restaurant named Bilva Diner in Thimpu for lunch. If you look up for this place in Google, there are exactly three reviews at this moment. So we were not very sure about the food. The second problem was this place is frequented by locals, so they don't understand English very well. Finally, we settled on some continental food which was easy to understand for the person taking the order. We got stir-fried seasonal vegetables, stir-fried chicken and white rice. But I have to agree now that you know this food is simply outstanding. The stir-fried vegetables were crisp, fresh and bursting with flavors. And the chicken, oh my god, it was so tender. This was our best continental meal in Bhutan. Since we have reached Thimpu by 2 pm today and even after lunch now we have enough time to go for some sightseeing. So now we are headed towards the Thimpu Zong or the Tashi Chu Zong. Is it just me who is feeling that you know this contrasting blue mountains and the wooden roofed houses, small huts? All this is giving a feeling of Switzerland. If you agree, let me know in the comments. Looking at this video, if you are feeling that we are moving at a snail's pace, here comes fun fact number 2. The speed limit in Kor Thimpu town is 30 km per hour and that is why you see we are moving at such a slow pace.
now we are entering into the premise of the Tashichuzong and uh, look at the roses there are so many pretty roses Uh, is photography allowed inside? Inside uh, uh, until you take off your shoe. Okay. Yeah, it's allowed. Yep. Uh, oh wow, really, uh, it is so beautiful. Tashichazo meaning the fortress of auspicious religion. Okay. Uh, so it was like built here in, uh, initially in 1771. Yeah. And, so it was extended uh, after Timbu becoming capital okay. in 1962, in between 1962 to 1968. So it was extended the size and then so uh, it became the main seat of the power. So this was the uh, capital earlier? No, not earlier. Presently, Presently it's this, capital. this is the capital. Timbu became capital in 1962. Okay. Then the king's palace is right below here. Okay. Premises. And then the king has a small, uh, like two uh, traditional story uh, Bhutanese house as a residential, uh, as a palace for him. Okay. And then so uh, we can't see because it's covered with the. All the bush. trees, yeah, the bamboo trees. Okay. So that's it. So there's a humble palace. This is also very pretty. I mean, while Punakha is the best, but this is also very nice. Yeah, it looks have, like Punakha. Every song has its own beauty, mm -hmm. but uh, among them, Punakha is considered as the most beautiful. Yeah. You just need to pay the entrance fee and your guide will do the rest of the formalities for any monuments that you enter. Only the monastic part of the castle is open for tourists within main chapel, which serves as the stage for all important state ceremonies as its main attraction. As I mentioned, photography is not allowed within the monastery, so I could not show that to you. But we saw the large statues of Buddha Shakyamuni, Guru Rinpoche and Zabdhru. Behind that long tower is the administrative block where tourists are not allowed. Moving towards the right, behind you can see the monks quarters where the monks live. In front of me is the monastic block which is dedicated to religious purposes, primarily the temple and housing for monks. The division between administrative and religious functions reflect the idealized duality of power between the religious and administrative branches of the government. 
The rose garden is so beautiful, it gives out a zen-like feeling. The place is so peaceful, it's almost therapeutic and you can easily spend a couple of hours just sitting and soaking in the natural ambience. I think May-June is one of the best time to visit with flowers in full bloom everywhere. Now we are heading towards the hotel. Tashito Zong is about 2 km from the city centre and uh, our hotel is basically right at the city centre. Uh, right next to the clock tower. That's the Royal Textile Academy. It's open Monday to Saturday 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. But since we wanted to visit it next day, which was a Sunday, it was closed. So any of you wanting to visit any of the government properties on a weekend, please check the timings first. On the right side, you can see the Bhutanese craft bazaar or the handicraft market of Thimpu. We'll try to come back here maybe in the evening or tomorrow. As we take a left from the main road, that's Pemako which is a 5-star property. Earlier it was jointly owned by Tashi Group and Taj Hotels from Chata Group but in 2023 Tashi Group parted ways and uh, rebranded the property under Pemako brand. We have finally reached our hotel Gekil in Thimpu. The Bhutanese people love their king so you will find the king and queen's photo in almost all establishments. Also, you see the benefit of having a guide. Here, we don't have to do anything. Our guide was taking care of all the check-in and check-outs. Tea ceremonies hold a special significance and importance in Bhutan and often serve to the guest as a welcome gesture. Here we are also being served a nice refreshing cup of tea and to be very truthful after a long day this deep amber liquid felt like a warm hug. Thank you. Time to enter our rooms now. Okay, first we have the washroom and a mirror and then we have twin beds okay we did not mention this to the hotel but uh, good they have given twin beds because it's easy to sleep that way uh, and a nice big window overlooking the town center and the clock tower we had reached our hotel around 5 30 pm and after taking rest for about an hour. Now we are again out on the streets. So Funcho has taken our leave and now we are just going along with Sange to experience something special but I'll tell you that uh, in some time. Right now we just enjoy the beautiful evening sky of Thimpu. We thought of stopping by the handicraft market on our way. Uh, so this is the entrance and we'll be just walking around. Sangye has parked the car somewhere uh, a little far from this place. By Bhutan standards, this is late evening so most of the shops are closed but uh, a few shops are still open and we are going to explore them. The 
is a perfect place to get a glimpse inside the art and craft of Bhutan. Uh, the shop sold almost similar kind of stuffs like fridge magnet, keychains, stamps, sling bags, scarves, etc. And in some of the shops, there were ladies or men who were busy stitching or weaving the items like a mat, wristbands, bags, etc. This is the special experience I was mentioning a few moments back. So here we are at the viewpoint from where we can see the Tashi Chu Zong by the night and this is the uh, road that you see illuminated by night lights that building with red lights is the tashi Jozong and the beauty is mesmerizing it looks even more heavenly if you are coming at night uh, especially if you are arriving after 5 pm so consider staying until sunset to fully appreciate its beauty After spending a good 20 minutes at this spot, we are now heading towards our hotel. This is a definitely must try. Dinner at the hotel was standard North Indian fare, but I was really not interested in having Indian food at a hotel in Bhutan. So we went outside and looked for a cafe. We found this quaint cafe called Thija Cafe which is like 100 odd meters from our hotel Gekil and just behind the clock tower. Mm. The place is artistically done. It's like a fusion between an American diner and Putney's aesthetics. Uh, you can see the whole setting, this black and white photo frames, choice of paintings and their display, the collection of books, plush sofas, the brick style walls and the soft lightings inside gives of very nice and warm vibe. They also have a small outdoor place uh, in the cafe where you can enjoy your coffee and I could see that the locals prefer the outdoor seating over indoors. Uh, I also read that this place is one of those few places in Bhutan which is open for early breakfast service. And I think they're open till late as well because when we went there it was almost 9.30ish, still they served us food. I found the menu interesting. It had lots of options between American foods, continental food, Italian food and so on. And there are a lot of coffee options also, so you can pick and choose anything. Finally my food is here and it looks great. I had ordered fish and chips and uh, this is like you know this is super crispy, crunchy, you can hear that crunch right? And it came with a nice sauce, super fresh, super delicious, amazing, I loved it. Just that a tad bit oily but I don't mind it. After finishing my food, we took a walk around the clock tower. It was almost deserted because it was too late as per the Putini standard. And uh, that day, I think they, there was some festival going on. The Later I got to know it was the 2024 Watermelon Festival, which uh, concluded after a day, which was going on for three days. And as you can see, those stalls are there, but there is no people at this late hour. So we just strolled around and then headed towards our hotel. That's our hotel Gekul. And I have done a separate video on the best stays in Bhutan. I will leave the link on the top. You can check it out. Before getting inside, we also went to the nearest 7-Eleven and the Korean fangirl in me got a bottle of soju. I'll show that.
I had heard that you get soju in Bhutan, but I really never expected that I will get myself one, but I did and it was good. Like after the long day if you have this, you will have a very peaceful sleep. So when this show people are passing out after having soju, I think there is some truth to that. Okay. Now let's head back to our hotel and finally call it a day. I love the lobby space. It's so pretty. The lighting is pretty. The vibe is pretty and overall it was a great day one. Uh we saw so many things. We experienced so many things and uh, we wanted to experience Bhutan as a country. more and more so you know we were really excited for what comes on day 2 and there's a lot of activity planned tomorrow so uh right now i'll sign off for the day and we will see you tomorrow with a brand new episode and a lot of fun and adventure stay tuned and thank you for watching Thank you.